Young at Harp. Today, we're going to talk about how to retune yourself with a musical mantra. I am Deborah Henson Conant. I'm here with Kathleen Wiley. Uh, I'm a composer and a performer, and Kathleen is a Jungian psychoanalyst. We both play the harp, so we call this Young at Harp. Mm -hmm. And this is a conversation. So, what we do each day is we come up with something we each want to explore with each other. And then that's the subject that we use. And it's something that we want to explore with you as well. So it's it's the art of conversation and the exploration of conversation versus us coming on here and saying, okay, this is how you do this, or this is how you do that. So even when we say how to retune yourself with a musical mantra, that's the question we're asking. So the question opens up answers that we will discover and that you will discover and that you will help us discover in the time that we are doing this. So Kathleen, <laughs> um, why don't you start? Because you came up with this idea. And then when you said it, I was like, oh, I have a musical mantra I would love to share. And so I'll do that. But I would love to get the context that you started okay. out with. Yeah. So in my online sacred circles for essential embodiment practices, one of the practices is concentration and use of a mantra. And so in terms of a spiritual practice, um, a mantra is, as, as the Tibetan Book of the Living and Dead says, that which protects the mind. It is a short phrase, typically, that gives, the, gives you somewhere to focus, to put your attention, to breathe into, to help bring you to a still place to connect with the larger self, the deeper self you are. And I got to thinking about that and about improvising. And as you all who watch regularly know, I'm married to a professional folk musician and have learned to play the harp in the last 10 years since we've been married, which has been quite an interesting experience. <laughs> and um, one of what things that's made it interesting is I'm always finding myself being invited to play with musicians who are, you know, they've been playing 40 and 50 years who are professionals, who have all kinds of training. And I can't do what they do, obviously. And so the idea of going in and playing one chord or a or harmonic progression or finding a vamp to just keep putting underneath kind of like a drum beat, I've always felt like it was less than. I felt like it somehow... It just somehow didn't contribute. It didn't let me fully show up. And it kind of dawned on me, maybe I was wrong about that, that having that phrase, that repetitive thing, the, the vamp is where my mind went, that I just kept going back to might actually help me deepen into my own inner harvest, deepen into the music, deepen into that sense of all of life where we're all flowing together. And so that's what prompted me wanting to talk about this, because I know for me day in and day out of my life and for everyone I sit with in, in my office and in individual analysis, or for those of you who, that, that are on, with me in the online sacred circle, every day there are moments where it's so easy to get pulled up and out and away from my deeper self, my authentic self, your authentic self that having the mantra, having the vamp to come back to as a way to stay tethered to the deeper knowing, to me is just an essential skill. So, you know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking, uh, I kept thinking, get ourselves out of the way, how to get ourselves out of the way while we're still in connection so that we can open that up. And that's making me think of a clogged drain. You know, <laughs> how do I get the hair out of the drain and, and get the water flowing? And so I'm, I'm just going to show two things that, that I've discovered that are very, very simple. And I think one of the things that happens with music is that we get the idea that it's supposed to be a certain way or a certain thing. And mm -hmm. yet there's all kinds of building blocks to music. And one of the things that I have an online academy where there's, you know, two, over 200 students there who are learning um, how to connect with 
their instruments and with themselves mm -hmm. and express themselves re and getting away from, I have to play this thing exactly right, but learning their a relationship. And when I grew up, well, let me play the mantra that, okay. that, that I discovered. And I never thought about this as a mantra until we spoke today. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 it acts that way. One of the things that's happened is at the beginning of every chat, which we have two chats on Monday, I am now teaching what I call a snippet. For me, this is just a little tiny bit of improv, which is exactly what I would do if I was playing with someone for the first time. I would sit down with them and we would just, well, <clears throat> we might play a blues because that's really simple. We wouldn't play a song. We would I mean, maybe other people do. Um, I mean, we, we, if we were jazz musicians, we might play a jazz tune we both know. But if we don't, if we're musicians from different parts of the world or different genres, we might play something as simple as this. And I, I, I mean, it'll sound maybe complex in the beginning, but then I'll break it down. So it might be. So what I'm but what what I'm doing here, what's really relevant here is this. I've got my harp tuned in C, but I'm playing in A minor. That's that's the focus. And all I'm doing is taking a string. Anyone could do this. You could do this on the piano. If you anyone could do this, you don't have to know music to do this, but you can explore music. You're taking one note, going down going down, coming back. It creates a four bar phrase and the notes happen to be in the minor mode. So my harp's tuned in C, this is an A. It just goes A and then G and then F and then G. Now you may have thought that what was really happening was all of that stuff, but that's actually not what's happening. That's the running of the water over this. Mm -hmm. So when I teach it, I teach people, don't watch your right hand. Let your right hand do whatever it does. Mm -hmm. You are going, la, 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 la. And I just realized this this second that I wrote a whole song on this, which is very mantra-like, which is, you have a voice that's yours alone. This is the tie that binds you deep in the dark of evermore. That's how your soul can find you. So raise your voice, for no one else can give the gift you bring. And this is the sound that turns lost into found when you sing. So there's a, a mantra, it becomes, it becomes this connecting, like almost saying, come to me, soul, where I'm here, come through the darkness. I mean, like you could literally sing out to your soul. What makes it, what, what opens it up is that there's structure and yet the structure is simple. We've talked about this so many times, Kathleen, mm -hmm. about having a container or something that holds us. And that's it. Although if you go in the other direction as well, if you make it a mirror, mm -hmm. it becomes even more kind of emotional. And what's I mean, it's a, it's easy to learn. It's a very easy thing to learn. And that's not the point. Right. The point is to be doing something that is so easy right. that you can then put yourself at its mercy uh, so that in, 
you know, we're all the time trying to get music or we practice it to get it. And a mantra or a this kind of approach is all about letting it get to you. So one of the beauties, if you're just playing it, one of the beauties of just... I'm not looking at my right hand. I'm playing only with three fingers because that's what's easy for me. And it starts to allow me to let go of everything in my head, which is, oh, that's not a good melody. <laughs> bad note, bad note, bad note. Part of the point is to keep doing it and to put on a timer. So you're doing this thing for five minutes, which is way longer than you could imagine that it would be interesting. You get away from interesting. You get away from good. You are you are using music as medicine yes rather than trying to craft something that's going to be impressive there's nothing wrong with that. i mean that's fun that's fun too but this is the this is the soul of your connection and it's also so difficult to accept that this mm -hmm. You might even leave out the other part. It doesn't matter what you leave out. It's so, you start realizing that is enough. That is enough. Something simple, so simple. Then you start to feel your fingers, start to notice that there wasn't sound before and you're making sound with this connection so the heart becomes part of your voice giving voice to another part of your body and it starts to become this connection it starts to become it just gets deeper and deeper and it can only happen when we are not worried about the music. And eventually it gets large, it can get larger and larger. So there can be a mantra, like this mantra could also be this big. can feel the breath of it you can feel mm -hmm. how you can ride on it and the and the power of it comes when you don't have to think of it, about it anymore when it starts to be internalized and so you have to start with something so simple that it becomes your breath and it has that i just realized that it mm -hmm. has that feeling of phrasing and breath so anyway, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I just, by saying that I kind of denigrated it. This is to me, I'm just going to say this. I mean, this is the other side of music. There is that whole constructing amazing buildings about out of it. And then there is your simple garden. Mm-hmm. And really being able to be in your simple garden of music that anyone can have, anyone can belong to, anyone can own. And what's in the way are the thoughts. This is not enough when it is so enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? What What are you? I'm, I'm sure your brain is like, um, what are those connections that are you're experiencing? Because I didn't know what I was going to say, so uh, <laughs> now, now I'm now I'm embarrassed. Oh no, no, I, no! And it's beautiful. It's beautiful when I allow myself to go to that place of discovery in front of others mm -hmm. and the excitement of it. It, it. When I come out, I'm just like, oh, I just showed myself. 
Well, and, and what you shared of yourself and as far as a musical mantra is beautiful. You know, part of what I was thinking about is how music is what happens between the notes mm -hmm. and how um, Rinpoche in the Tibetan Book of the Living and Dead says meditation is what happens mm -hmm. between the thoughts and the focus. It's the, it's the pauses. And one of the mantras I often use in my spiritual practice comes from the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. And I sometimes break it all the way down to just be, be, mm -hmm. be. And right. what happens with just going back and giving oneself over to the mantra, the vamp, whether it's the word mm -hmm. or it's the musical phrase, is we begin to sink into this place of being that is between the doing, between the thought, right. between the feeling, because we are all so much more than any one thought or any one emotional state right. or any one musical pattern. And learning, having skills to drop into that for our personal self is what we do in the essential embodiment practices. And part of what you do in Hip Harp Academy is help people find that place within them where the music goes on all the time. Right, right. And the well, the spring of it. The spring. I, that's I, right. I'm the gonna, source. The spring. Yes. I'm going to bring this up from Kirsty, who says, yes. wow, I think the snippets. So the snippets are these things like this that we just mm -hmm. do at the beginning of each chat. And Kirsty says, I, I think the snippets in hip harp chat really are mantras because I always notice that I get into a meditative sna 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 state <laughs> and connect with myself on a deep level when we do that practice yeah. together. And, you know, I hadn't ever put those words to it of, of what mm -hmm. Kirsty's saying when we do that practice together mm -hmm. and it's just making me think of oh my god what would this be like i i have done this in concert you know where where everyone's playing this together and singing ah, and the others are singing ah, so that we have that that practice together and, and Kirstie's saying there is a feeling that all judgment dissolves. Yes. And uh, that, yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. And what's interesting is the development of the snippets in the academy because I too was constantly trying to teach things that was, oh, let's be impressive and <laughs> let, show me, let me show you what I know. And these are the simplest building blocks of music mm -hmm. and yet they're so powerful and 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 we're beginning to realize that these are like the heart and soul of what i'm teaching and then you see then you can start to see how it expands into more complex music but if we can take that with us like you said we're taking who we are or god or whatever whatever we however we see it we're taking it with us into all music and you just said something a second ago that real I got excited about. I'll put this back. You you were saying you take that mantra down from be still. You, there was a longer one, mm -hmm. and then and so this is a you know this is that long. And then when you said that, I thought this too. That's like just be. And I do remember that I did a chat one a snippet one day that was all about a single note, what a single note can be, and you know whether you add to it. When you're whether you're playing around it or whether you're really just playing it or exploring it. So I love that you're doing that, and I'm realizing that you know that. It, 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 as you talk about it, it makes me realize that there is music in everything. Mm -hmm. And the, the experience that we have in music, especially when we can stop crafting it and making it too complex and be simple with it, we can, that can open us up to other simplicities. And I'm curious, Kathleen, what, I mean, you have so much 
reference, you know, Jung and all of this stuff. I'm curious what it's making you think about this, this two part thing, you know, that we're talking about mantras, we mm -hmm. say mantras, we um, play, and there may be even mantras that we, you know, physically do. I don't know, you know, that's not my field. What does it occur? What comes to you from your, like from Jung or from like, about that simplicity and about that, the practice? Well, one of the things that Jung says is that our psyche, the essence we are, has a gradient that our libido or our psychic energy will follow if left unobstructed. And so for me, the mantra, whether it's the words or the musical mantra, are a way to clear the obstructions. They, they move, whether it's the judgmental thought whether it's the panic about where do I go next, whether it's the, um, oh, I've got this, this, and this to do, or whatever it is, or can I make that next note on the, on the paper or the next phrase? It takes all of that away. It clears it away, not by efforting to move it, but by just coming back and getting underneath it. And that, and that most basic uh, states where, we drop into the river of ourself and we go with the flow. I mean, when you did that one note, it's hypnotic. I mean, this is part of what I've been discovering about the harp and using a vamp or a snippet or the one note, um, particularly in the bass section for me, it almost becomes like the hypnotic induction of the drum. You know, yeah. And, I mean, it and, is a drum. I mean, the harp yeah. is a drum. So, yeah. Yeah. It just pulls you. And what it does is it just kind of pulls you down underneath those obstructions. And, and psychologically, those obstructions are things like this is who I should be. This is what it means to be a harpist. This is what it means to be a good person. This is how I'm supposed to be a wife and mother. I mean, it gets underneath all of that learned stuff and it gets underneath all of the internalized feedback loops and trauma that we have held on to unconsciously and it's like <gasps> where we freeze oh <gasps> that happened it's not i'm not safe or <gasps> he said that it must mean this you know it gets us underneath that to where again it's like the river of our own being the river of the essence our psyche is it's still flowing i'm just imagining you know sitting by a river that's just the water's just flowing yeah, I want to go back to what Kirsty said, because um, what you're saying is reminding me of this last, there is a feeling that all judgment mm -hmm. dissolves. Yes. And I, I think it takes, it takes time to be with doing it. And part of what is important and so opposite to many of our experiences with music. Because many of our experiences with music is we're taught a piece. Okay, you got that piece, now learn this next piece. Right. Oh, you got that piece, learn this next piece. So you're constantly behind yourself and not doing something that you can do. It is as if the thing that you are literally taught that the thing that you can do is no longer meaningful or valuable. Mm -hmm. And so you leave the songs of childhood behind, You you, and I think that's also part of the power of of a of a mantra of mantra music. I mean, I, I've never, I'm I'm sure there is such a thing, but I mean, of how we create a mantra with music, the the function of it is to let it be, even if it's even if it's just that. I I mean, it's to find something and not try to make something better. It's not about making it better. It's about letting it open you. It's letting you it's letting it retune you. Well, and what you said earlier about having a practice and letting the practice get to you, it's a different, instead of the ego with all of our expectations and ideals of what we should be doing, being in charge, we just set that aside and open to the experiencing of it. I mean, that's the difference is we open to the experiencing of it. And this, again, is part of the reason that I'm um, doing the embodiment practices and processes for with people 
we learn to get out of our experience from the time we are born. Right, <laughs> I right. mean, it's amazing how uh, the socialization process and feedback from other people, the shadow of it, I mean, it does a lot of good, obviously, but the shadow of it or one of the um, negative consequences of it is we're constantly being taught to pull up and get, get over our experience instead of dropping into it and down through it to the something more that is behind it. And so the practices that you talk about with the Strings of Passion and throughout the Park Academy and, and the embodiment practices are ways to begin to develop muscles to drop down, to, to be able to bear our experience you know, so and and drop down underneath it. So we experience the something more we are. And our ego is then retuned to the essence we are instead of staying tuned to outside expectations and ideals or the ego's construct of who we're supposed to be and what that's supposed to look like. Right. Right. And it... Uh, and and so I well I, so I want to just say how we might do this, mm -hmm. and and I'd love your input on. So I'm going to say how to do it with an instrument, and then I'd love you to say how we might do it with without an instrument. And so I would like to say if you have a keyboard or if you have a harp, this particular one. I, I actually shared about three of them, but this particular one, your harp is all in the key of C, which means if you have a keyboard, it's all the white keys. Mm -hmm. And if you can find the A, which is, so C is here, you go down one string or key, and then you're down to A. Forget about music. Forget, a, once you find it, forget about what it is. And you're playing that note, and then you go out from it in both directions and go out again in both directions and then come back. That, that's, that's probably the simplest of all of those that uses both hands. Mm -hmm. There are many variations of that, but that you can do it as slowly. You don't even have to come back and notice that you can breathe within that. It's almost like a breath of music. And my suggestion is to put on a meditation timer for at least five minutes. And as all as the thoughts come up, because they will, there are several things that you can do. In the, in the beginning, you know, the first couple of times you do it, you can write them down. I have something that I call the demon pot. <laughs> it's just a picture of a pot um, on, a, on a page that when these thoughts come up, I just write them down. Like, I'll, I'm, I'm a husband that never was. I'm, um, I'm the worst person in the world. Um, I, I'm, I'm a fake. You know, all, just all the little dramas that come up in your mind. You may have your own write them down so I can start to be, oh, I know you, I know <laughs> you. And you don't have to write them down. You could, you could also say, just say them out loud. You could record this and you could say them out loud. It doesn't matter. It's just that eventually you want to get to the point that you can let them go. They can dance between the notes of the music. Sometimes I sing with what I'm playing just to feel the vibrations in between the instrument and me. To re-experience my relationship and I belong to this and it belongs to me. So I can really experience it. Mm -hmm. And there's so much judgment that uh, we need to let go of over and over and over and over and over again. And I find that having a timer helps me stay there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I will go to judgment or I will go to I need to make something more interesting or something like that. And it's all about 
staying there long enough that it's like going into the woods and being still long enough that a beautiful wild animal will come out. And that wild animal is us. And we may not get to spend the rest of the day with it, but that's a magical experience. So that's what I would, that's one of the simplest musical mantras that I would suggest for anyone to play with. Mm -hmm. and, and Kathleen, what would you share that we could do when we don't have an instrument? Yeah. So I would, invite you to pick a word or a phrase or a sound you know the sanskrit mantras like even om which is the universal sound of creation um there are many mantras the the be still the rosary prayers for that some people who have prayed with rosaries are can be used as mantras. You know, if you have a spiritual tradition, there probably is a phrase or a that could be used as a mantra. If you don't have a spiritual tradition, think about songs that have gone back through your mind. Mm. What you shared this morning about you have a voice. I could right. imagine sitting and, and going again, bringing my attention into my body with my breath and on the in-breath saying, you have a voice and I'm speaking my soul and just letting that become my mantra on the in breath. You have a voice and I'm speaking my soul on the exhale and pairing the inhale and exhale to your heartbeat. So I, mm -hmm. one place to start is just four heartbeats is the inhale, mm -hmm. you know, you have a voice and then four heartbeats and exhale and i am speaking my soul and and pair to that because that does several things it begins to regulate your central nervous system and calm you down mm -hmm. the rhythmic breathing to your heart begins to tune you into your own physiological processes that are going on the mantra with the words give the mind something to do because our mind wants to be busy and there's nothing in it that is about judging what's happening. It's just about coming back to this is what I'm doing now. And when you find yourself somewhere else, you just come back. And I too encourage people to set a timer when they're doing their practices because then you can let go of watching your clock and you can drop into it. Right. And, I, I love the timer on my phone, which is harp music, <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that when it goes off, I'm not jarred. It's just right. more like a subtle right. meditation. And I think working with that, and if that feels like too much, then just start by noticing your breath and just bringing your focus to your breath. And I loved how you talked about, even with your instrument, <laughs> when we can be in our body, and we can be in sync with our breath. It is amazing what that immediately does to release the mm. tension in our body that can get built into playing an instrument. Right. And it also begins to calm the mind to where we're not thinking ahead in a way that we're worrying. Right, that we actually can be tuned into the moment. Right. I love this. Um, as you were saying, I was thinking, I have a voice. Yes. Let it speak from my soul. Yes. I have a voice. And I, I love that. And I love the idea of, of course, singing that as well. Mm -hmm. But the words themselves are music. Yes. I have a voice. And to be able to feel the vibration, I have a voice. Let it speak my soul. It, you know, in every, and uh, I mean, I might even go on. I, 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 it's making me want to do like, mm. I have a voice. Let it speak my soul. Yeah. yeah. Every way I can. And at that point, it, it almost seems to go from a mantra to a prayer. I, I don't really know, you know, how I would define the difference, but it's and um, but it doesn't matter because it's all about that tuning and using something 
over and over instead of trying to do something interesting, different, actually using and being and connecting and resonating to this simple thing that you have that belongs and that you belong with. Yes. And it's amazing when we tune into that deepest river of our essence, what then happens that the ego has often been trying to force mm. that when we just let go and dissolve into our essence, something then to use the alchemical word coagulates, it begins mm. to take form mm. in a way that the ego with all of its goal setting tools and techniques and persona drivenness could never accomplish. And right. that's, yeah. that's the same with music. When we can let go, then something arises from within us that touches us and other people in a way that we can't orchestrate with logic or reason. Right, yes. And it doesn't mean that I don't want a goal set or, or all right, of that. But right. I think this, this is talking about how we get set the roots for that and get the, right. get the full resonance. Um, well, Kathleen, thank you again. I feel like I have a whole new practice to explore, a whole new way to reconnect with my instrument, with myself, with, you know, on, on my journey. And again, I love this, these conversations of discovery with you and Kirsty and everybody else who's listening. Yeah. Thank you so much for the focus and the connection and all the beautiful things that you write to us afterwards, as well as during. Thank you. Okay. And um, thanks, Kathleen. I'll see you. We'll see you next week. And mm -hmm. I just want to say for everybody who's watching this, my show opens in New York City, April 20th. It starts the run April 20th. And the tickets are at goldencagemusical.com. I'm so excited about it. And now I feel so much more calmer going into <laughs> that. And Kathleen, when does your um, next embodiment practices begin? Yeah, so the embodiment practices circle opens on, will be open for new members to start on the summer solstice so june 21st so you can go to innerdivinespirit.com check on online circles and it will give you a link to all that information and you can sign up for the wait list and that way be sure to get going in the summer beautiful okay great all right thank you so much and um i will see you and i'll see you kathleen and everyone else next week and keep harping on the good things in life. And using your mantra. <laughs> yes, to do it. Okay, bye-bye.